Hello everyone and welcome back to Aztec Time. If you look on your screen here, you will see my actual Proxmox cluster in my home lab. And later on in a future video, we will be creating this exact same layout here. But I wanted to go ahead and give you an idea of what the differences are between a container and a virtual machine in Proxmox. And if you look up here on this one node, I got several different containers. And down here on this node, I have a virtual machine. And just from looking at a container next to a virtual machine, you can tell that the icon is different. The container icon looks similar to a cube. And then down here, the virtual machine looks a lot like a computer monitor to me. And in case you're curious, this right here is a container template, something that we will be creating in a future video. And this right here is a virtual machine template. Again, something else that we'll be creating in another video. And what's really cool about either one of these templates, what you can do is you can right click one of them and you can click clone and then instantly create another container or virtual machine that's an exact clone of that template. And again, we'll get into more details on those in a future video, but what we're gonna focus on in this video is how to choose between a container and a virtual machine. And as you can tell from my cluster, you can have multiple virtual machines, you can have multiple containers, and you can even have a mixture of either. It's up to you really what to do. So that brings up the question, which should you pick? And the short answer is whichever makes the most sense for your use case. And I personally base my decision off of how much RAM the host node has available on it. So if I go to my node one, click right here and go to summary, you can see that I'm only using 20% of the available memory I have, but my total RAM is only about 7.6 gigabytes. So in a situation like this, I can host a lot more containers, as you can see from the left, than I can virtual machines, just because of the simple fact that a container will use up a lot less RAM than a virtual machine will when running. A good rule of thumb is each virtual machine will use up roughly four gigabytes of RAM. So if you had a machine that had a lot of RAM available, you could run several virtual machines. Or in my situation, I have only about one or two virtual machines and then several containers. So again, when trying to decide between containers or virtual machines, take into consideration how much RAM your node has available altogether on it. If it has very little RAM like mine does, you can probably navigate toward containers, but again, this decision is completely up to you. And the great thing about Proxmox is that you can always go into the settings for the container or the virtual machine and give it more RAM or turn a virtual machine into a container if you needed to. Now, when it comes to virtual machines, I'll use this one for an example. You're already using two gigs of RAM more or less, depending on if you're running something very resource heavy on it. And right now, all I'm doing on this virtual machine is it's running a Ubuntu 22 server and nothing else at the moment. So these few resources is fine for it. It's more than enough for it. So in this situation, I'm probably wasting two gigs of RAM with it running. It would probably be better to put this as a container than a virtual machine. Now, if I go up to this container here, I have one gig of RAM allocated to this container. Now with containers, what you need to think about is you need to look at this one gig of RAM as a limit. So this container may not actually be using all one gigabytes, but that is the maximum amount of RAM that it can use. So that's a hard limit on the amount of RAM it's using. And that's one of the big differences between a virtual machine and a container. And of course, there's a much, there's much more details when it comes to containers, because you got the kernel and other resources. But to keep everything simple, containers in general use up a lot less resources than virtual machines. So in my personal opinion, anytime you can get away with just using a container, you probably should be using a container as opposed to a virtual machine. But there is one downside when it comes to using containers over virtual machines that you should know. So let's go back to this virtual machine here. And as you can see, I have two hosts. And this particular virtual machine is running on PVE node 2, as you can see from the name here. And since I have a cluster here, which is something I'm going to get into in a future video, I can right click on this VM here and click Migrate. It's going to default to my target node since I only have one available and then we'll click migrate. And if you notice from the dialog here, it's copying the virtual machine as is from one node to the other and not shutting it down in the process. So it's keeping the virtual machine available for users. 
Now, because I have 32 gigabytes available in this virtual machine, this may take a minute, so I'm gonna pause the video. Okay, we're back, and as you can tell from the output on the log, it has successfully migrated over. If you look back through your log, you'll see that at no point in time did it actually shut the virtual machine down. So the virtual machine stayed running and stayed available to all users as it transferred from one node to another. Now some of you may have got an error message when you tried to migrate. You could not migrate while you had an attached CD or DVD drive. If you got that error message, you would go to your virtual machine and then go to hardware. And then if you would select the hardware device I was talking about, and then you can click detach on the hardware device. I'll use this old PFSense virtual machine for an example here. So you would have to go to the virtual machine if it was running, you would have to shut it down. Of course, PFSense is already shut down on mine. You would go to hardware, then you would go to the CD DVD drive, and you would click remove. It would ask you if you're sure you want to remove this entry. You would click yes, and then you could go to either migrate here and start the migrate process, or you could right click on the virtual machine and go to migrate like we did previously. And it will transfer it shut down if it's already shut down in this situation, and it could also transfer it while it's running, as we just did. So now let's try to migrate this container here from PV node 2 to PV1. I'm going to select the container, right click, and go to migrate. Select PV node 1. I'm going to click migrate, and then let's watch the output. And it's shutting it down first. And this is going to take longer than a virtual machine, but one thing to note is it's going to automatically shut the container down regardless of if it's running or not. So you have no other option with a container when it comes to migrating. And that means that live migration is not something you can do with a container at all. So if you're running an application that cannot afford any downtime, then a container would not be a good option to run that application in. You would need to run that application in a virtual machine. So that automatically rules out a container because a container will have to shut down. It will not be available. No users will be able to access the application on the container while it's being migrated. And then it literally copies that container over to the other node. So it's in fact not a live migration. It's copying it from one host to another. And as you can see, it's done now. So we'll close this. And here it is running over on node 1. So again, you cannot live migrate a container. It, the container will shut down, copy over, and then restart. So if you're running an application that cannot be shut down, that your users need access to on a 24-hour basis, a container is not a good option. You would need to go with a virtual machine. Now, another thing you need to know about containers is that not all applications will run properly in a container. Now, there's no master list saying what applications will run and will not run in a container. Container, but it is more or less a situation of trial and error. I have ran across a few applications that for no reason that I could find just would not run inside of a container, but ran fine inside of a virtual machine. And another downside about containers is that if you are running an application that's being provided by a vendor, not all vendors will support the application being ran in a container. So you may want to check your documentation on any applications that are vendor supported that you have before you place them in a container. If that ends up being the case, they may deny you support if they find out you're running their application inside of a container. So find out from your application's vendors if this is unsupported setup. Now, I'll be honest, most applications out there are fine with it being run in a container. It's just something to keep in mind. And the big argument between containers or virtual machines really just comes down to resources. So if you're using a machine with, that doesn't have a whole lot of RAM to it, you're better off using containers as much as possible than virtual machines. Then if you have a machine that has a lot of RAM available, you'll be perfectly fine using virtual machines. In my situation here, as you can see, I only got 8 gigabytes of RAM, so I don't have a whole lot of resources. So I'm going the container route more than the virtual machine route. But all that being said, I don't really have that much running on here anyway. And my other server is in the same situation. It only has four gigabytes of RAM, which is why there's only one virtual machine running on it right now. So to answer the question between container or virtual machine, it comes down to your personal choice and the resources you have available to you. The general rule of thumb is that a container is going to use up a whole lot less resources than a virtual machine. So if you are limited on resources such as RAM, you should go the container route. But if you have plenty of RAM, you should go the virtual machine route. But then again, it's up to your personal choice. I personally prefer containers over virtual machines because of the fact that they use up so little resources. But again, that's all up to you. So thank you so much for making it to the end of the video. Be sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe so you see more tech related content.